Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. You're probably here because you've either just purchased or you're thinking about buying some pallet gear equipment. Uh, so I wanted to make a video talking through um, what to buy, what I've bought, how to set up the software, um, and how to get things working between pallet gear and Logic or your door of choice. So first off, I wanna talk about where I've come from. So I've got a MIDI keyboard that has its mod wheel on. I wanted more. Um, I've always wanted to be able to do more. I wanted to be able to control modulation and expression and vibrato and, you know, have a bit more of a hands-on approach to things instead of just using my keyboard and mouse for everything. So this is what I had. Um, it's been under my bed for the last couple of years because although I consider myself to be relatively competent at computers and technology, I can't get this to work uh, how I want it to, and it's just too complicated for me. So, pallet gear. So, there are a few options to consider when looking at um, what you think you might need with pallet gear. First point of call would be to look at the packs that they have, the, the ready-made kits that they do. So, they've got starter kits, which come with a fader, uh, a dial, and two buttons, expert kits, which come with you know, additional stuff, and then professional kit with even more additional stuff. So for me, um, as my needs are primarily modulation, expression, and vibrato, I went with the starter kit, um, which you can see here, which comes in a box like this. Um, and I opted to add on an additional fader, um, which you, so you can add that to your cart, you can scroll down and add on any additional things you want. So I got one additional fader um, so that I could have um, everything I needed basically. So first things first, once you've actually got everything you've ordered in the post, inside the box you'll spot there's this little uh, quick start guide um, which is worth taking a very brief look at, although generally speaking I won't look past the first page uh, because that's what we do, right? Um, but there's a couple of things to take note of. So first things first, you need to um, just go to palletgear.com forward slash start and actually download the software. Um, and then before you start assembling your equipment how you like it, um, plug in the main module, which is the sort of brains of the operation, um, and it will appear in the software and then you can start attaching modules as you wish in a, in a way that you would like it to be laid out. Um, that's basically all you need to take away from what's in those instructions. The rest of it's an absolute dream. So let's actually talk about setting it up and getting things working within Logic. Okay, so you've downloaded the application. I'm not going to talk you through how to do that because you're all super intelligent, competent people. And once you've opened the application, you'll see that there are all these different profiles set up, um, which have lots of different parameters set up for specifically to those bits of software. Uh, there isn't one currently for Logic. The reason you can see Logic here is because my application is currently open in the background um, and it recognizes open apps, but there are no presets for Logic as it stands right now. So all you want to do is jump in and set up a MIDI profile. You will see here that um, the brain is illuminated. It's called Untitled 1. And once you achieve this state, you are in a position where you can actually start building your palette gear as you choose. So I've got mine laid out and it should be as simple as clicking things together. You'll note that once you actually start clicking things, they obviously automatically appear on screen. So next up. Now sometimes they don't light up straight away. Uh, so just, you know, bear with it. It's, uh, it's worth it. Here we go. Okay. So we've got a fully assembled um, rig, as I would like it. Um, next thing to do is to start syncing things up with Logic. Now, first thing to do that's really important is to have a look at your MIDI channel. Um, as you can see, my MIDI channel in Logic is MIDI channel one, but currently, because I've already got a Logic profile set up, it's, it's diverted to channel two. So you just want to change this to channel one, so that when we start making changes, you'll actually be able to see it happening. So right, we've got labeled here CC0. Um, we want to change that to dynamic. So there's a few ways of doing that. Within automation, you can see within MIDI automation that dynamics is CC1. Or if you prefer, you can right click and you can see that CC1 is the 
parameter for dynamics. So you click on the thing you want to change, you pick CC1. What we want to do is, if you want to do this, obviously if you want to have some, add some glamour to the room, you can start setting colours. So if we say that we're going to change um, everything that's going to do a parameter like vibrato expression or uh, vibrato will make the same colour. So we'll make that like a nice purple. You can see that it immediately changes purple on the hardware. Uh, it also changes on the software. Or if you prefer a more bright colour, then let's go, with, let's go with blue. So CC1 now will change dynamic in Logic. It's as simple as that. Um, we also want to change vibrato. You could either have vibrato on your dial or on your uh, wheel here. I'm going to go with the uh, second fader. So vibrato is, uh, where is it? It's CC21. Perfect. Uh, now finally we want to change expression. Expression is CC11. Or if you want confirmation, it's CC11, however you'd rather do it. So you'll be able to see then, once you've assigned th these three options here, that we've got total control over everything through these dials. Um, so let's give an example here. Cool. All right. Basic demo. Um, now the buttons, um, there's lots of things you can choose to do with these buttons. Um, you might want to make them start, stop and record, potentially. So let's look at this button here. Um, we'll go to keyboard mode and you literally press a button. So for me, start and stop is spacebar. Hit spacebar and we'll make it green for go. And then um, let's say this button here, we want to arm it for um, maybe like hitting record so you can start recording whatever you're about to do. So keyboard mode, R. Uh, and we'll change that to like red for recording. So there's my setup, right? So all my faders are working, my dial is working. So let's test my, um, let's test these buttons here. We'll close that for now, we don't need you anymore. So we should, in theory, if I hit this button, it should start playing. And if I hit it again, it should stop. And if I want to record a cello line in, pretty cool, huh? So that's basically it, guys. Uh, only other thing to mention is once you've assigned all these um, CCs or whatever you want things to do, um, they're sort of programmed within each module. So if you want to adjust the layout of your palette gear in any way at all, then it will remember what you've assigned to each thing. So you don't need to worry about that moving forwards. And you can obviously set up multiple prof profiles. So um, it will look the same, but I've got slightly different colors. And my profile, I don't have stop and record. I have the option to flick through different markers so I can skip forwards and backwards through my sessions easier. But other than that, things are exactly the same. Well, look, I hope it's been useful. I hope if you were thinking about buying uh, Palette Gear that you go ahead with it. Um, it looks really good. It works really well. It feels really good. It's super well built. I can't praise it um, highly enough, really. So let me know if you liked it. Uh, if you've got any questions, let me know. And uh, have a great day. Cheers.